Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Opposed? All right, the floor is open now. Welcome. Stand, sit, stay here. Whatever you want, as long as you stay here. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll just sit over here. Yes, that's fine. I am Jesse Mikulski with Eland Electric. Um, we applied for uh, some of the excess Lambo sales tax revenue about two years ago and were awarded $60,000. Our grant was a kind of a conceptual grant. We had nothing specific that we applied for. Um, essentially, it was using some of that money to invest in the city uh, solar for city-owned property or in some way, shape, or form, using that money to, to build solar arrays throughout the city. Um, and I'm so sorry, your address. My work address? That's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, 3154 Holmgren Way. Um, so when we first were received the grant, I, I tried reaching out to you know, a variety of city leaders to see what we could do because, again, it was conceptual in nature. We had nothing set in stone that we wanted to apply the money to. Um, really never gained any traction, so that's why there's been such a delay in using this money. Um, at the end of the day, if, if we don't do anything with it, um, you know, I, I, it is what it is, but I would really love to work with the city to make sure that what we're doing with this money is something that the city agrees upon. I don't want to just say, let's go put $60,000 in solar over here, and then everybody else say, well, what the heck did you do that for? Um, because it was conceptual, that what we applied for really opens the door for some feedback and input, you know, primarily from the Sustainability Commission, but then also through other um, city leadership groups to maybe find some other uh, ways to do it. So. Uh, what we have is $60,000 to invest into some various city solar projects. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you know what? I was in my That's zone. perfectly fine. Could you just, sorry, could you, I just don't know anything about Eland Electric Corporation. Can Eland Electric Corporation, we are a family-owned electrical contractor. We've been in business since 1958, so just over 60 years now. We're on our third generation owner. Um, we primarily work in the commercial and industrial electrical contracting setting. About 15 years ago we started to get involved in solar. Um, we helped on the, the solar flowers that are at um, Light Park. Botanical Gardens. Oh. Way back when the Botanical Gardens first got involved in it. So that was when we kind of first started getting involved in solar. Um, I am a project manager for Eland Electric and I head up our energy efficiency and renewable energy division. So I go out through the community. Um, we probably go as far west <coughs> as Stevens Point, uh, as far north as Marinette, Menominee, um, Crandon, Crivets, all those areas down uh, probably as far south as Fond du Lac and east of the lake shore. That's, so it's kind of our solar coverage area. Um, we employ uh, on average about 60 electricians in the field. So. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. No problem. Then we're located down on the south end of Home Greenway. So one of the thoughts I had is uh, there is some solar that is installed at Liked Park. Um, light, not likes. That's <laughs> right. So that wasn't fixed. <laughs> I've always heard of it as Lights Park. Um, well, I thought I did that so sorry. So there are two solar tracking mechanisms at Light Park that were donated to the city by Wisconsin Public Service. Um, they're kind of diamond shaped in nature. The modules that are on there were used modules. I believe they came off the old Shopko distribution center. So those modules when they were installed were already 20 some years old, uh, which is probably why WPS had no problem donating for it. So that was, <laughs> that was given to the city. I believe WPS maintained it for a period of five years and then ownership of those trackers was turned over to the city. Um, currently, the, we had a little dis L uh, LCD display outside the fence uh, where the electrical equipment is, so there was a little display that kind of kept track of how much energy it generated, kind of a public facing display. Um, that is no longer working. Well, um, the tracking mechanisms, I believe, are no longer working. As you go past there, they're probably not both facing in the same direction and they're not really following the sun anymore. Um, I had worked with Keith Wilhelms, um, so I had given him a proposal last year to attempt to fix those trackers, um, put in new, a new inverter, new updated modules, so brand new modules that would come with a brand new 25 year warranty would generate a lot more power than those trackers are currently generating. Um, so with this, with the Lambo field money, one of my thoughts was to incorporate um, electric vehicle charging stations which are built into the solar inverter. So that's a picture of uh, the solar edge inverter. 
and it has a built-in level two car charging station. I believe that if we were to upgrade the trackers with new modules, fix the tracking mechanisms, and put the two of these uh, EV charging stations in there, one located at each pole, the energy generated by the solar array would be more than enough to compensate for what energy might be consumed by electric vehicle um, EVs, electric vehicles. Jesse, regarding that, uh, and regarding all of, all of the proposals, will they be tied in to the grid? Yes. Okay. So these not are all, not all of them. Okay. But this one in particular, the car charging would be tied into the grid. Yep. Light Park is currently connected to the grid, so what little energy it does generate reduces the utility consumption of Light Park. Mm -hmm. There's not a ton of usage there. I know they have the bands there every once in a while and some events there, but right. outside of that, there's, there's really no consumption there. Mm -hmm. um, there might be a handful of landscaping lights or um, pathway lighting there, but there's not a lot of usage there. So this would be a, a utility interconnected system. Uh, we would install it with a cellular modem so that the city and anybody could view in real time how much energy the system is consuming, how much energy the EVs are using, um, and really keep track of that over time. So this would be one option. Um, these are kind of budgetary figures. I haven't really put the pencil to paper yet to get firm costs for this. Um, so I think we could do a lot of that work with the $15,000 if Parks and Rec had some money set aside or earmarked for fixing those trackers, then we could take some of the money out of here and just, you know, maybe incorporate the EV charging stations from the Lambo money and then have Parks and Rec fix the trackers and put the new modules on. Um, I know I gave that proposal to Keith last year. It sounded like they were entertaining it. I don't know if it was ever, the money was ever truly set aside for it or not. So that's uh, one of the options, $15,000 to put in uh, solar car charging stations at Light Park. Um, downtown, very visible. The trackers are very visible as they sit right now. They're probably just not very attractive because they're not always moving in the same direction. Um, so that was one of the, the thoughts. Next slide. Um, as we really tried to diversify the money, um, one of the things that I came up with or thought of would be these um, solar powered basically cell phone charging stations. Um, this is a device, uh, they're about five grand a piece. Um, you can just anchor them to the concrete floor next to park benches, next to, to bus um, rest stops or bus stations, bus stops. Um, basically has solar panels on all four sides and a solar panel on the top. You can get it with the LED light or without an LED light. And then there's a bunch of USB ports built in for people to plug in tablets, laptops, anything that needs a USB outlet to charge any of their electronic devices. Uh, so I thought maybe we could get two of these, station them you know, maybe on the, the boardwalk, downtown, at, at a park, anywhere. Um, they're mobile. Pick it up and move it if it's not being used heavily in that particular area. Can it be picked up and taken away by anybody? <laughs> and, and, and if disappear. they had the right tools and equipment, sure. Um, you know, we would. My plan would be to anchor it to the ground, secure the fastener right. to okay. a concrete sidewalk somewhere. Right. Yep, yep. Um, someone came in with a hacksaw; they could cut the four legs off. Wow, and that's. I mean, that walk away with it. Right, right. You find it in your yard. We know. <laughs> 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 I believe these have a five-year warranty on them. Yeah, and when the cords wear out. Um, people would bring their own cords, so it just has USB outlets. Outlets, just. So people typically, kids these days, I know my two children, um, two of my three <laughs> children, uh, basically have an iPhone charging cable in their pocket at all times. Yeah. Um, so th that would be the intent is people would come with their own cord, you know, whether they're sitting with a backpack. My suggestion would be in the winter time to take them out and store them just because nobody's really going to be sitting on a park bench um, December, January, February, March, which is probably what would be the harshest for these and possibly degrade them quicker would be our winter conditions. So that would be kind of a suggestion would be to um, put them in storage throughout the winter time and then deploy them in different areas. Do they uh, have their own battery unit down there? They have a built-in battery, so basically the solar panels charge a battery up during the daytime in addition to supplying power to those USB outlets and then through the evening hours there's a built-in battery to still supply power. So these wouldn't be tied to the grid? These would be the not grid tied concept or option. If we move them around where we bolted them to the concrete, does that need to be in or anything, you know, with that kind of, yeah, know, would it take much to do this <coughs> or something like that? I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. I mean, a little bit of concrete patch, and maybe they just could put back in the same spot. Again, this is all. Well, I like the idea of moving them around, mm -hmm. but I think, 
Okay, good. Yeah, or as you have them, two of them out in the city and you hear from the constituents that, you know, hey, it'd be nice to have one over these, you know, over here at this bus stop or at this park or on, mm -hmm. you know, over here. So the $10,000 is, is for two? Yes. That seems okay. really expensive. I don't know. They are. They're very decorative in nature. This is probably one of the more popular ones. Um, I know Wisconsin Public Service, if anybody's been, I think they have it at the farmer's market downtown here today. Uh -huh. They've got that little picnic table with the solar-powered umbrella. Yeah. Made by the same company that makes these. Mm -hmm. That picnic table, I think, is about twelve grand. Mm -hmm. Basically a picnic table with a solar-powered umbrella. Um, they are not inexpensive. Um, this right. is probably my least favorite of the options, but just wanted to kind of show a variety of different things that we can do. Um, nothing is set in stone in terms of allocation of dollars from one concept to the other, and we're not limited to just the concepts here. Anything you guys can think of, we would be more than happy to do. It's really the Brown County taxpayer money. Um, we'll use it as... Is this a low maintenance option, though? Yeah, this is a low maintenance option. So that brings the cost down? Pretty much everything we would do would be a low maintenance option, with the exception of Light Park. Uh, Light Park, those trackers do move and they rotate, so there are grease uh, fittings that should be greased annually. We haven't, when WPS had the contract to maintain it, they would hire us to go fix them, repair them, um, and maintain them since it's been turned over to the city. We haven't been out there in probably two years to look at them or to do anything with them. Right. And we can eliminate the tracking mechanism at Light Park altogether and just fix them facing due south. That is very much an option as well. What happens if it's damaged? Is it just a loss? Potential insurance claim, but I'm assuming your deductible is probably far greater than the yeah, value of one of those. Is $10, hmm. um, theft, uh, I mean anything out there is always going to be susceptible to hmm. vandalism by nature. If they malfunction or stop working, that's a warranty and uh, will be covered by the manufacturer of that. But some kid comes by with a baseball bat and smashes the side of it, it would be a loss. Again, probably my least favorite of the options, but just wanted to show that there's far more things out there than just putting solar panels mm -hmm. on a roof somewhere. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Yep. Um, one of the other thoughts was if there's any walkways, um, walking trails, jogging trails, um, public trails out there that are not very well illuminated, we could look at solar powered pathway lighting. So what this is, is it's an LED parking lot light, just like you'd see on the side of the streets. But the, I didn't do a good job of grabbing a picture, but the top side of that whole light fixture, you can see the LEDs on the bottom would look just like a normal street light. But the whole top side of that light fixture is a solar panel and encapsulated in that assembly up top is a controller and a battery. So what happens is the solar panel collects sunlight during the daytime, charges up the battery, and then the controller runs the LED light fixture at night. And there's a variety of different settings, dust to dawn, you can do full brightness from dust to midnight, and then 50% brightness from midnight to dawn. Um, it basically allows you to get lighting in remote areas where it's been very expensive to bring utility power to. So if there are any roadways, and I think you know, we may have, there may have been one that was brought up. Mm -hmm. I can't remember where that is located. Oh, okay. uh, west side somewhere. Yeah, where good it idea. Though. Kind of goes through some backyards, and it's a very wooded area. Um, and it, from what I heard, people don't use it too much in the evening hours just because it's very dark. Um, so if there's some public spaces that are not well illuminated, we could look at solar-powered lighting to help brighten up some of those walking trails. Um, paths, sidewalks, um, parks, maybe things that are very susceptible to vandalism right now because they're very uh, not well illuminated. This would be a, a low cost option um, to provide solar powered street lighting. Jesse, are they also tied to the grid or are these freestanding? These are freestanding as well. What's the life of the battery? Um, I believe they have a 10 year warranty on the battery. Okay. So lithium ion battery. And there's a variety. There's probably a hundred different manufacturers of these solar powered lights out there. Mm -hmm. I just grabbed one that I know is a little more common. Do they tend to see a decline over time on the battery strength? Yep, the battery will lose its capacity over time mm -hmm. and that's where that little controller comes into play. So we would design it for dust to dawn operation at 100% and maybe incorporate a motion controller so that it is dust to dawn 100% when there's motion. 
whenever there's no motion, it dims down to 20% light level. Sure. Helping okay. extend the life of the battery. And again, depending on what model, the height, the how much lumen output you need from there, you might be able to get three of them out of that fifty thousand dollars. You might be able to get five of them out of that that money, really depending on what type we go with. How much of an area does it light? Depending on the design, you could probably get at least a foot candle, a single foot candle, probably 50 feet. So if this was a, a walking trail and the light was mounted here, you'd get about 50 feet left and right of that light fixture. It'd obviously be very bright underneath the fixture, but you'd still have about a foot candle of illumination, probably as far away as 50 feet. Again, conceptual in nature, not knowing any specific location for this, it's really hard to determine how big of a light we would need, how much space we want to illuminate. Um, just how high it, yeah. the height of the pole, yeah. things like that. Would that Next be good slide. at bus stops? What's that? Would that be good at bus stops? If the bus stops are not very like close to utility power, I, the best thing to do is, is, is if it's a bus stop and there's mm -hmm. you, electricity close by from a maintenance side of things, um, it's probably a better option to just install a utility light or a utility powered light um, and then maybe there's a third of the money that gets you know dedicated towards just traditional rooftop solar um, this was a project that we did down in the valley it's at evergreen credit union they're on the excuse me corner of 441 and 41 um, that's a 50 kW system on that roof uh, with twenty thousand dollars if we earmark that we could probably get close to a 10 kilowatt solar array, 10,000 watt solar array. We could pick any highly visible public uh, city owned, not public, city owned building. And it doesn't have to be highly visible. I just think, you know, the city would gain some marketability from that. Um, if it's a, a very publicly visible solar array, showing that the city is, you know, making efforts in sustainability um, and pushing to be a little more green. Um, so that's kind of the last option I have there is taking some of that money and just simply dedicating it to a roof mounted solar array. This and Lights Park uh, are the two options that would actually generate some savings for the city. So if we put in a, a $20,000 rooftop solar array, roughly 10 kW in size, it's going to generate about 13,000 kilowatt hours per year, about $1,300 in value per year to the city. So taking the tax money, $20,000, the Lambo tax money, investing it into solar would have a, a savings to the city of about $1,300 per year. If it was a rooftop and then if it were the EV chargers at Light Park? Part of that concept would be fixing what's there. So right now those tractors generate some form of energy. If we fix them, repair them, and put new modules on there, um, I'd have to run the math on that one, and we don't do a lot of trackers anymore, so the simple calculations are not stored in readily <laughs> um, accessible memory. Mm -hmm. But that would be an option where if we put new modules up there, again, you're going to add the EVs, so people are going to be consuming energy at Light Park trying to charge their vehicles, but I still think you would have a net uh, generation. Um, you'd generate more energy with those trackers than people would consume charging their EVs. Um, Somebody also mentioned to me e-bikes are becoming a little more popular, mm -hmm. electric bikes and scooters mm -hmm. and things like that, and you know, having maybe a public charging station for an e-bike at Light Park, tie it into, mm -hmm. you know, it wouldn't be powered by the sun, but it could be adjacent to one of the EV charging inverters on the trackers, um, giving the appeal that it's a powered, uh, powered by the sun. So going back to your rooftop solar, you said uh, 10 kW. How many panels are you looking at? 10 kW would be 320 watts per panel, 10,000 divided by 320, about 32 panels, 34 panels, somewhere yes. in there. Hmm. I'm doing the math right in my head. So there's so many options and so many things. So how did you narrow it down? What made you think some of these were some of the better? Um, I did meet ideas. with Seth uh, just to have kind of a general conversation to try to narrow it down for this meeting. Um, I could easily probably lay out 100 different options um, and take up every every minute of your meeting tonight with a variety of different options. But I didn't really feel that was necessary, nor would I feel I would keep anybody's attention for that long. 
Um, so these are the ones that I thought, you know, the, the few things I kept in mind was um, benefit to the public. So those EV charging stations, in my mind, would provide a benefit to the public, the general public. Um, highly visible um, from a marketability standpoint, both for the City of Green Bay and the Sustainability Commission. Um, so some of the, you know, pretty much the options here, for the most part, would be very publicly visible. Um, and providing some, some value kickback to the city. So whether it's the trackers at Lake Park or the traditional rooftop solar, those two options would provide some sort of financial value back to the city, some savings to the city. So they're investing money, the tax money, that you know, is really no out-of-pocket expense for the city to do so because it's all the excess money from the sales tax revenue, um, but providing you know, $1,300 a year in kickback um, to the city. Now, if at the end of the day, everybody agrees on just taking all $60,000 and putting it into rooftop solar, that's an option as well. We could target a few different buildings. You could probably get um, at least 30 kW, maybe close to 35 kW where the solar installed with that $60,000. Um, and basically $1,300 in value for every 10 kilowatts installed annually, um, you could probably get close to $4,000 a year in value um, savings to the city. And there's some neat things the city could do with that if they want to take those energy um, utility savings, whatever facility it is, take that $4,000 in savings and reinvest that into an economic development fund, uh, some sort of grant program, um, kind of a, a pay it forward thing. It, it functions almost like an endowment at, at that point in time where you invest the money that you really didn't, isn't taking out of your pocket. You have a, a free chunk of money basically to invest into a solar array which can provide financial value to the city. So you can take that value coming back in from the solar array and, and do whatever the city chooses. Um, maybe it, it, it's seed money for some of the Sustainability Commission's um, investigative procedures, um, consultant fees, um, and things of that nature. There's a lot of different, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of different things the city could do with it. What's the potential for these um, cells, do you call them? Solar panels? Yeah, the panels. Um, to adjust to the future, like to um, be kind of sustainable, sort of. I mean, I know they're not totally sustainable, but to be able to evolve a little bit, are they? Is that getting better? Yeah, the panels themselves. Um, the analogy I always use is the automotive tire. A long time ago, somebody decided a round rubber tire was the best way to get around. Back in 1960, Bell Laboratories figured that this type of solar panel was the most efficient way to harness sunlight. That technology is what we use today. It's still an aluminum frame, glass front, polymer back sheet, silica cell based solar panel. The automotive industry with their tires has evolved significantly over time. Tread patterns, speed ratings, things like that, but it's still a round rubber tire. That hasn't changed. Um, so I don't anticipate module technology in itself to change. They'll get more efficient over time for sure. But if we did traditional rooftop solar, the one thing that I would do is I would use Enphase micro inverters. Um, Enphase is announcing and it'll be available next year, but uh, basically they'll have battery-based systems, um, battery expansion packs to add on to their existing systems. So if we did an Enphase uh, micro inverter installation with the solar panels, next year down the road, the city could, if they really found that they, it was whatever building we put it on was critical to have backup power, could look at adding batteries to that solar array as well, where that facility could have 24-7 power in the event of an extended outage or, God forbid, another tornado. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you look at, for the um, electric charging vehicle stations, I mean, thinking about like more of a network of them rather than just one single one? I did not really contemplate a network of them simply because the grant that we had applied for, the grant we submitted for the tax money was essentially based on solar. Um, the city could install networks of EV charging stations throughout the city, whether they're solar powered or not really would be up to the city. But Light Park was the easiest one to do it at because there's two pole mounted sure. so mechanisms. So it would be more expensive to do one by like original. Digging holes, pouring concrete, yeah. setting up bollards. Um, we did the one at Bay Park Square Mall um, and it was probably about 15 grand just to put in just a standalone EV charger. We had to cut up the sidewalk, uh, pour concrete footings, 
Um, depending on where they go, ultimately dictates price. You know, um, the Meyer store, I mean, they probably have $200,000 invested into those Tesla supercharger stations. I see businesses being more um, more willing to offer that at their own properties, attracting people to come shopping there. Um, typically, it's front row parking. Um, I don't know that I've really ever seen municipalities distribute EV charging stations and have a network of various EV charging stations scattered throughout the municipality. I don't know that I've seen that yet. Not that it doesn't exist. I just haven't been a part of anything like that. We could be a leader. Could definitely be a leader. College campuses, you see that? Yeah. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you again. So the options are essentially endless. Um, the best bang for the buck, take the 60 grand, put it into rooftop solar, whether it's one single city garage. Uh, you know, I, I thought about City Hall, but City Hall would not be the most cost effective place for solar installation just because of the challenge of electrically installing it. What putting about? solar panels up on, and the city doesn't have a very big roof. Right. What roof space is up there is filled with mechanical equipment. Air handling units, uh, the elevator, penthouse, and shaft. There's not a lot of available space on City Hall's roof. But, you know, I, I would think that there's some other, you know, parks, park shelters. Yeah, Bay Beach Pavilion. That's undergoing a renovation. It's a historic building, and I don't know to the extent that roof of that age could support additional weight. I don't know. Um, but I'm not sure exactly when the renovation is going to go underway, but that is in the offing. And I don't know that. But that's very visible. <laughs> it is. I, I, the historic <laughs> nature of it would give me pause. Mm -hmm. That was kind of my original target two years ago was Bay Beach was the perfect area because there's a lot of space, a lot of land, a lot of area. Um, a lot of electricity it, it being was, used. It was, shot down, <laughs> it was shot down pretty quickly because yeah. of the ever-changing nature of Bay Beach. And yes, it was always adding. You know, every, every square foot of grass they have is precious and the fact that it's potential ride down the road. Um, so the, the few channels I did work through initially Bay Beach was discussed heavily, um, but very quickly, no. Mm -hmm. Charging Not station would be fantabulous. At Bay Beach? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Front row? Front row. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you misunderstood the charging station oh. I meant. Oh, the iPhone? Yes. Oh, the uh, iPhone one? Yeah, that would be a good place That would be really cool. Yeah. Jesse, um, before we kind of close and, and make our determination of our recommendation, um, I think it's important to talk about and maybe explain the difference between net metering and then also, you know, if we put too much at one spot, what happens that, as far as the utility rate versus the net rate? Very good point. Um, Wisconsin Public Service was the utility provider from what I would imagine to be all of the city's properties. Mm -hmm. um, Wisconsin Public Service has net metering, monthly net metering. They will allow you to be uh, fall under a net metering net metered tariff if you install a system 20 kW or smaller. Once you go above 20 kW you are no longer a net metered customer. What net metering stands for is that within a monthly billing cycle the utility will allow your solar array to generate power and offset consumption at the facility. There may be times where during the daytime or weekend that the solar is generating more energy than the building has a demand for. In those situations, your utility meter will literally spin the opposite direction. You will be exporting energy to the grid, and WPS will be crediting you for those kilowatt hours. They don't assign a dollar value to those excess kilowatt hours at that point in time. They wait until the end of the month. So they net out the difference between consumption and generation at the end of a monthly billing cycle. If you have a net generation, meaning we've sized the system way too big, it's generating far more power than that facility is consuming, WPS will buy that excess energy from you, but they buy it from you at their avoided cost uh, for the wholesale rate of power, which is about three and a half cents per kilowatt hour compared to the retail rate, which is about 10. So we don't want to put in 35 kW, excuse me, kW worth the solar on a little park shelter that has zero usage or hardly any usage whatsoever. We always want to try to maximize 
the value of the solar by designing a solar system around the usage of a building. Now, if we go greater than 20 kW, if we go outside in that metering, so say we dedicated all $60,000 to a roof-mounted, ground-mounted, pole-mounted, uh, whatever type of solar system we wanted to do, if we did that all at one facility and it was greater than 20 kW, you are no longer a net metered customer, meaning Wisconsin Public Service will buy excess energy from you at the time it's generated at that wholesale rate of power. So if it's on a facility that's closed Saturday and Sunday, and the system is generating excess power, all the energy generated in excess on those days are going to be valued at three and a half cents a kilowatt hour at the time it's generated. So it would be important for us to select two facilities um, or one facility that has you know enough usage where we're not going to be over generating because then we can offset uh, retail purchases at the 10 cent per kilowatt hour rate, maximizing the value or the gain or the kickback back to the city. At the end of the day, it doesn't cost the city a dime to put this in, so even if they're only getting three and a half cents a kilowatt hour, something. it's still something. But to maximize that value, to provide enough kickback or savings on the energy bill so that maybe the city or this committee can do something with that money saved, it would be best for us to maybe look at two separate 15 kW systems on facilities that would consume most, if not all, of that energy. That would be the best best way to do it. And again, if it's a portion of the $60,000 is for this and for that, I'm more than happy to do whatever this commission or other city leadership wants to do. I don't anticipate it's a discussion that will be hashed out overnight. Um, I haven't gotten any feedback. Um, there's probably some legal gray areas with that grant money, um, us being a contractor. Um, if this committee would say, let's put $60,000 in solar on this garage, does that have to be bid out? Does that constitute the requirement of an RFP? Does it not? Can Elon just do the work? Because we were awarded the Lambo sales tax money, there's still some gray areas that um, I don't know that we have concrete answers on yet. So I think there's time. Um, we do rough mountain systems year round, so if it becomes December 1st and we have a plan and we have answers, not an issue for us installing this in December. Ms. Ellison, do you have anything? Does there need to be an RFP if they were already awarded the money? Um, so as Jesse says, that's a legal question. We have actually upped our um, minimum for an RFP. So I think the minimum, I think the minimum is 50 now instead of 25, um, thousand. So, but given the fact that the money was already awarded to them to do solar projects, I'm not sure that an RFP yeah, is that warranted. Yeah, that seems weird. But Good. that's that's a question for the law department. He's yeah. going to answer. Thank you. That would be, be a weird law, I think. But it's, it's you never know. for the law department to answer. And uh, you bring up a good point. Yeah. And because this was money that we were awarded, mm -hmm. Eland Electric's position on this is not to profit. Um, we're not going to mark up the materials. Um, we're not going to. We're going to mark up our labor labor enough to cover our overhead, which is, mm -hmm. in, in all sense of business activities, part of our cost. Um, so we're going to have our overhead markup, but no profit. We're going to pass this on as much as we can at cost to the city because it's not our money. It's not the city's money, it's the taxpayer's money. And the last thing we want to do is start lining our pockets off the backs of the constituents. Is that politically correct? That was, yeah. fantastic. That was right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there are so many that are. Come on, man. <laughs> so I don't want to take up a whole lot of your time. I'm more than happy to answer questions. Um, even if it's outside of this meeting, emails, um, I can come back to a future meeting um, to answer additional questions, whatever works for you guys. I just appreciate the opportunity to come here and have this group who, who is really, this kind of task is on this table, this whole sustainability effort, um, really felt I could get some valuable input and, and have a group of people who have dedicated a lot of time to do this to really maybe think of some ways or, or figure out what is the best solution, what is the best mechanism to get this money utilized and not put back into a general fund. Because that's part of my fear is that if I don't use it by the end of the year, it's going to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesse, if we spread out the money like among different neighborhood, different neighborhood park shelters, small arrays, do you think, um, I mean, would that, 
would we still be able to get the 30 to 35 kilowatts out of it? It would be a little more challenging to do so that way, only because, you know, like your house, um, there's that electrical work that goes into installing a solar ar array, sure. whether it's 5kW or 50kW. Mm -hmm. There's some inherent costs from the electrical infrastructure side of things. Mm -hmm. Now Wisconsin Public Service requires an external disconnect, so we'd have to put in an external disconnect on every one of those park shelters. Compared to if we just had two separate buildings, it would just be two separate 15kW systems, and we'd only have to do that electrical work twice. If we spread it out amongst 10 different park shelters, I don't think we could get 3kW on 10 different park shelters. Right. Um, not that we can't, I just don't think we can get the same capacity um, of solar installed for the same amount of money. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions? Is, is there a way that you can tell which one, which one of these things would have a greater um, CO2 or the smallest CO2 footprint? That one. Mm -hmm. I don't know that anybody's ever asked me what type of footprint solar creates. Or takes away from. Takes away, yes. Generating the most kilowatt hours. The system that would generate the most energy kilowatt hours would have the biggest um, CO2 reduction, carbon footprint reduction. Um, Lights Park would probably be the one that might have the biggest impact in terms of CO2 reduction because the structure is already built. All we really all we have to do at Lights Park or Light Park, <laughs> excuse me, um, to get that thing running is to put new solar panels on and new rails on top of the tracking mechanism, and just put a new controller in those trackers um, with the EV charging stations. That would have the biggest carbon reduction on a, on a per dollar spent, in my opinion. Um, traditional roof-mounted solar would be a very close second. Okay. So even including the the EV charger, that would still have the most impact. The electrical infrastructure is already there, and because they track, they generate more kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak. Huh. So a fixed roof-mounted solar array roughly generates 1,300 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak. A tracking mechanism will generate about 1,800 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak. So a, a, a system that tracks and follows the sun generates more energy per kilowatt capacity. And because a lot of that electrical infrastructure is already done, the poles are already there, the concrete footings are already installed. If we did Light Park brand new, then I would change my answer. But because mm -hmm. Light Park is already, for the most part, there, the trackers mm -hmm. are already there, it's just a matter of repairing them and replacing the modules. Mm -hmm. Even with the new inverters, I think it would be a bigger carbon offset per dollar unit invested in the Light Park. Um, traditional roof-mounted solar would be a very close second. Would that, so if that's a bigger carbon offset, would it also be a bigger monetary offset? Or would it would still rooftop be the biggest monetary? Impact? Rooftop would be the biggest monetary kickback savings to the city. Mm -hmm. Just because at Light Park, I'm gonna assume that people are going to charge their vehicles there. Um, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, the city's not gonna see the value of all the solar at Light Park only because people are consuming some of that energy with their cars. And what, what size array are you looking at again at Light? Um, each one of those trackers is uh, capable of supporting 225 square feet of panels, which is about 3.6 kW per tracker. And, and I can, you know, if you guys have a few different thoughts, I can definitely sharpen the pencil and get some firm val dollar values associated with. In Light Park, it's a little complex only because if, if Keith and the Park and Rec Department is willing to it, take some money that was budgeted for it and repair the trackers and all we got to do is supply and install the EV charging inverters well there's hardly any money you know that probably goes down to five thousand dollars if all we're doing is putting in EV charging inverters and Parks and Rec is repairing and repairing the trackers and replacing the modules it becomes a very low dollar amount as that would be taken from the tax money I was looking, trying to look for Keith's email, um, Keith Wilhelm, about with, um, and it had some information about what our goals were for, like if we had money set aside for repairing that solar way. Uh, I had an email, but I can't find it. All right, well, let's.
let's uh, enter into a discussion then about yeah, motion to close the floor. Close the floor. Give me a sec. Did you have any, did you look at buildings? Yeah, at all? Possibilities? What? The mayor gave me usage, electrical energy usage, I think for all of the city owned property. Yes. So I have, have that. I have that yes. data. Um, I have not really dived into it to figure out which one has the highest usage and um, translating those accounts to addresses to Google Maps to figure out. So I haven't done a ton of research on that yet. Um, part of that is because if this committee said we're not going to do roof mounted solar, we just want to do trackers and EV stations. Well, then I don't have to invest just the time. Trackers. Trackers. Just one tracker. <laughs> one Tesla supercharger. Yeah, right. There we go. Right. That'd be cool. Okay. All right. Motion to close the floor. There is second. Motion to close the floor by Ned, seconded by Randy. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed. All right, motion carries, floor is closed. Thank you so much for- No problem, do you need to stick around at all? Or? You can stick around and then what happens if they want to ask you a question and I'll open up the floor again. Okay. Very clumsily, but that's how it works. Well, I'll stick around for two minutes or so. Cool. Thank, you, Thank you, Thank you. Now, whatever we decide though, however, we don't have final authority, we right? We're gonna to have to send this to a committee. That is correct. So you may need to do a little presentation, present the again so we can perhaps prepare the plan. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to take this. You want to leave this up or take it off? Oh, no, it looks okay. nice. Yeah. It looks furry. <laughs> <laughs> it's marketing for me. There you go. <laughs> it's more electricity. Right. Right. Sure right. it, right. it, it is on camera. It is on camera. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> I guess I have my thoughts on this. Power what are your system. thoughts? I'd like to hear Seth's thoughts. You do? Okay. Yes. Well, I'm uh, very excited about um, the opportunity to, to save money um, on this. So I'm very, very into the rooftop solar. Um, I think 20K would be the lowest that I would want to go on investing that. Um, I also really, really like the, uh, the light park uh, proposal. I think having uh, uh, public uh, car charging stations is a really good uh, like highly visible thing, but then it's also just a really good step in the right direction for providing more um, access for um, electric car systems. Those are the two I'm most excited about. Um, and then I would be kind of kind of into the um, solar lights on the walkways in the parks. Um, I can take that or leave that. And then less so excited about the uh, um, phone charging things. I like the phone charger, especially like maybe at Bay Beach or Wildlife Sanctuary. But I'd want that to be at the back end if there's some extra money, mm -hmm. depending on how much extra money and so on. But yeah, I like the roofs and I like the light park. Yeah, I think the light park is a nice option for visibility. Mm -hmm. uh, and so is the rooftop solar, depending on the building that is selected. Um, so I, I think you should be able to, part of the committee's charges to educate mm -hmm. our constituents. And I think those are two opportunities for that. It'd be interesting to see if we could somehow monitor the usage. I mean, I'm all in favor of the car chargers, but I, I would like to see, you know, I think starting with two is this sort of a, a nice way to just dip our feet into it. And I want to see what the, what the community does in terms of using these things. We do want to start using Light Park more as far as uh, events. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it hopefully it would be used to help um, for energy for those events. So, I mean, it, it's used now to some extent, uh, the park, but uh, I think there are plans to uh, get some work done on that park, perhaps even put up a, a type of um, stand for bands and a band, a band stand. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so that, I mean, I, I think we need to be clear about how this, how this actually works. The, the solar that's tied into the grid collects the energy, sends it into the entire, you know, WPS right. grid. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I don't want anyone to leave thinking like if we put panels at Light Park, that that energy stays at Light Park, mm -hmm. right? It, it's, it offsets the city's overall use, use. right? Mm -hmm. So um, 
uh, as far as we'll, you know the, the options that we looked at tonight, um, I think they're all really cool. Uh, my, I personally would love to get the biggest bang for our buck, um, and and really take take seriously the fact that we need to move to clean energy. Um, so I see panels on roofs as being the biggest bang for the buck, and and probably the the best use of the money. Um, if we put a small, even even though the car charging station I think is great, a small 3.6 kW system, um, it doesn't send the, you know, it doesn't send as much energy to, uh, to the grid as what we could do with fifteen thousand dollars for panels on roofs, right? And when, um, as as a as a former employee or current employee of WPS explained it to me, if a lot of solar a lot of solar isn't being sent to the grid, then they don't really off. They don't really turn down their, you know, their boilers in there. They don't really, you know, s stoke less. It has to be a big influx um, for us to really do some kind of carbon offset. So, even thinking environmentally, I think panels on roofs are probably going to make the most difference. So I would, I would be all for spending 60000 on panels on roofs. Um, I do like the idea, if, if we want to do something else with it, then I guess the car charge station um, tied into the grid would be great. Um, I can't see justifying a $5,000 phone charger, no matter how cool it is. Like, I think it's super cool, but I, I can't see justifying that. Um, trail lighting, not a bad idea. If there is input from the parks where they'd like trail lighting. Um, I don't know if they've stated that or not. Um, and yeah, instead of running electrical lines out there, then, then possibly, but but yeah, my, my preference would definitely be for allocating all that money to rooftop solar. I did have a question with the walkway lighting. It says $15,000 on the slide. And I know we mentioned that there's variances and purchase options. Now, was that 15000 per single unit, per single walkway light? Or could that be like Divi to provide uh, multiple lights? I believe he said three to five. Three to five. Three to five. Yeah. Per 15000 I think with the trail lighting, it would take a little bit more assessment and like time yeah. of like figuring out what the need is and where and how much. I just wanted to clear that up. Like yeah. I'm, I'm totally on board. That I think the rooftop option is by far the best. But I just wanted to clear that up on the walkway lighting, as far as uh, money and how many units you get per that fifteen thousand. It does sound like they had a specific location in mind that would be suitable for the um, for the walkway. I just don't recall. Yeah, was it the Edinger Trail? It was something on the oh, west. You said it was on the west side. Yeah. So Okay. Um, I think too that you know we're all going forward with this and eventually we will have a lot of solar and we will have a lot of electrical vehicle um, chargers so any either of these two I think sound really great I'm just ex more excited about the electrical vehicle chargers just because you can't really buy an electric car yet around here and uh, there's well, there's one out at Meyer and WPS. There's WPS has Festival a one yet. Festival WPS Festival and Bay Park Festival. Yeah. Festival. Mm -hmm. It's got a full charger that charges oh, Festival 20 minutes. Festival over here on University. Yeah, been charging. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought the hotels did down over here. Oops. Yeah, but like at the WPS parking lot. The WPS parking yeah. lot. Yeah, behind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I think it's all good. I think, you know, whatever we decide is a step in the right direction, and that's where we're going. That's, that's where we're going to land. So. Uh, I would just like to throw in for the charger and for Lake Park, I think that those, the bang from the buck there is not so much the practical use of the carbon footprint, which is very, very important. <laughs> very, very important. But I think it also publicizes us and what we're doing. And I think the public 
would be using those things a lot more and appreciating those things a lot more and getting more tuned in to the mindset we'd like people to start getting towards green energy, new energy, solar energy. And so I just think from a PR standpoint, from a, a practical uh, publishing ourselves and, and educating people and getting people moving in the right direction, they're going to feel that impact on their lives immediately, charging in their phone. And a lot of people will be doing that. That is, you, 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 uh, uh, solar panels on a roof, which I want to put most of the money toward. You, the guy in the street isn't even going to be aware of that. You can tell, we can tell them that, we can publicize it, they're going to forget it. you got a station where they're constantly using it. They're constantly being reminded that this is, came from the City of Green Bay through the Sustainable uh, Commission to promote green energy and, and uh, uh, provide a service for you that you are going to use all the frickin' time. Yeah, I think just the fact that the infrastructure is there already, too, is a really big bonus, and it's not really that much money to fix it and put that in. You, you know, thinking about your direction, too, you, I don't know if you could put some kind of meter that's public that people can see how much, like those water stations yeah. now, that you can see how many gallons mm -hmm. are saved or water bottles are saved or whatever. Because uh, yeah. we can make it like a public education tool, too, that's a little bit beyond just you're getting plug it in here, right. like what actually, what it's producing for the right. park, like the park created, we use this much energy at this festival, this music venue, and it was offset by this or something right. like that. Yeah, because I think idea. you can tell people, we are making an impact for you by saving this much energy and reducing this much carbon print, and that's more of an intellectual exercise. They don't feel it. They're not experiencing it like they would Public pushing a uh, uh, recharging something they own. So yes, I think could that the as value as of it's not going to be a phone like charger at White Park. This is not this the phone well, charger. No. Yeah, but, it, but, but it, say it's facilities. Like so, if it offsets the electricity from an event. You could promote it as a sustainable event place, a place yeah. where pe like people mm -hmm. can come host sustainable events, op carbon neutral events, or something like that too. I mean, I think there's an option. There's marketing mm -hmm. there to be had. Um, and then the r I do think the rest would sh go into the panels because then it produces potentially the seed money for right. maintenance. Or I, I definitely want to see most of the money go towards. I think that's most money. Yeah, that's so that, that makes that is the best. And I guess sense. my question is like, what well, is the city going to be committed to uh, maintaining this then once it's fixed since they so didn't maintain it the first time? That would <laughs> be, I think, as Jesse had talked about. Part of what would need to happen is any savings would need to be collected so that there's maintenance. So as we, with the Public Arts Commission, as we're moving forward, we are collecting money for maintenance, not only of the art that we are installing, but the art that is already installed. So I think that this would have to work likewise. Um, let me also, let me offer a few things too. Um, we actually just had a conversation here at City Hall about um, publicly accessible um, electric vehicle charging stations and mentioning the ones that are, are around. Now, most people who have an electric vehicle, 100% electric vehicle, they charge at home, right? It's the visitors that don't have the opportunity to charge because they're at home. And so, you know, where is a, uh, a safe, convenient place for someone to park their electrical vehicle if they are going to be charging over X amount of hours. And I know that the technology is getting better, they're, they're faster charging. Um, and so we were talking about, well, where could we put one? So this is very timely because we just had a conversation here at City Hall, and but maintenance, of course, came up. So we need to make sure that there's money in the kitty somehow for maintenance. Um, something else, too, about putting solar panels on buildings. Um, we are in the middle of a capital, in capital infrastructure assessment. What do we need? Where are not just the roads, which is so obvious, right, but what's going on in this building, for instance, this 60 some odd year building, old building. What's going on at Fire Station 1, which is 100 years old? What's going on at the police station, which is 50 years old and not in good shape? What's going on at Station 3, which is 80 years old. Um, transit, 
right? So transit just had a little bit an issue a winter ago, and that's a relatively new building. So as when I think about putting solar panels on roofs, I think, yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. The first thing I think about is which buildings, right? Um, there are reasons, one of the reasons why it doesn't work at City Hall, not only because of the things that Jesse had um, talked about, but there's six floors here plus a basement. So that's a lot of stuff going on for us to put panels on the roof um, to offset. So I think that what's been floated makes a lot of sense. I think that this committee probably would need some more information to make a recommendation as to which buildings. Um, I really like the idea of uh, putting, fixing what's at Light Park and putting an EV charger because uh, I think it benefits the people who are visiting us and I, don't, I do think it makes it really public. People don't go by, I mean, I think places that actually could. I think transit could benefit from one of those, now I'm not on it anymore, let's see. The charger? charger? Yes, the phone charger. Yeah. We have phone chargers. But oh, you have phone chargers inside? Inside, yeah. Okay. In the lobby and in the commission room. Okay. And in the commission room. Okay. We've got two. Mm -hmm. Two or three. And a lot of people cycle through, right? Transit Center. Now we have the um, Amtrak bus. We've got that Packer bus. It's going on. So I think that transit is a good kind of central place for people to get educated about this a little bit. Um, but. Just floating that out there, we did have a conversation recently about EV charging stations and how they need to be accessible for visitors especially. I think it would be really good to have something on rooftops, but we would need to choose that carefully. I, don't, I do actually not think that park shelters are a good candidate. And he was talking about the, the new technology being, being able potentially to be hooked up to a battery, and so looking at emergency service type buildings could be a really could be something useful. So. And the nice thing about fire stations, they are currently still 24-7. So, mm -hmm. as is our police station, but And that's pretty, there. that could be visible. I mean, I mean that could oh, be a be. really great public, like. Especially like an Arnie Wolf. I mean, our fire stations are located yeah. deliberately on arterials. So that would be. And everybody loves firemen. <laughs> not the police not the stations, police. <laughs> not the fire, fire stations, <laughs> people love. Chief Smith would beg to differ with <laughs> that. <laughs> I'm just saying when you are in an yes. emergency, the, you send your fire person to go talk to the fire because <laughs> people trust them. <laughs> and I think transit has some good centrality, to be honest with you. So, uh, just something to float up. Yeah, to transit about. would be really cool. Also, like a, it sounds expensive for a solar power charging station, but thinking about potentially the population too who is using them too, like that could be, you know, it's not just letting, you know, teenagers at Bay Beach charge their phone or something, yeah, but people more people who actually need it right. too. And I know the last batch of bus shelters that we did purchase, they, we did buy some wood solar lights. Nice. So. And if there's an emergency, I don't know if that's a place where people go. You know, and there's no electricity in the city or something like that. You can think about that too. You know, time when I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, that's interesting. Because like Houston, when they went through their huge hurricane, people are going to the mall trying to sit mm. there and charge everything because nothing worked anywhere for weeks. So mm. thinking about if there is a major outage. Awesome. Always the people. So what more do we need to make a decision? We need to figure out what roofs before we can recommend going to roofs? I would I would suggest, I, I, my, my suggestion to you, Seth, stop me, um, my suggestion to you would be to direct staff to find out some information and then I can come back um, next month with some information about what you think you need to have in order to make a decision and recommendation and that wherever you decide those should go, would go to the appropriate department. So if you want to do EV charges at Light Park, obviously that's the Parks Department. If you want to put something on, you know, the roof of St. Arnie Wolf Station, um, which just had a million dollars worth of damage repaired from the flood, mm -hmm. like a year ago, whatever, um, September. So um, that would go, obviously, to Police and Fire Commission, essentially, or Finance. Well, isn't that a park? Isn't it just a little parks? 
I'm sorry. That, that is, it's a fire station building. Yes. Mm -hmm. Parks is not managed. Right, 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 right. It's fire, yeah. All right. Well, well I'm thinking, but the, 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 the fire commission. I mean, but, but there, but that commission, the fire and police and fire commission. I mean, I think we would need to go. We have to take it to a standing committee. It might we be finance. finance. Yeah, it might be. Yeah. I mean, if it were to go to transit, transit would have to decide whether or not they want to have that. Right. Right. They have their own. Commission. Well, they're yeah, they have their own thing. Water utility. We also have water. Let's, you know, we have more than just buildings where people occupy them. Yeah. We have pumping stations, lift stations. We have, so water utility has some buildings as well. So there's a lot of buildings to think about. I think you probably want to get a better understanding yeah. before you yeah. decide on a building or type of building. I think it would be great to have those spreadsheets that we got to have staff or Anyone, <laughs> maybe staff, hopefully staff, look through and, and kind of rank buildings by usage so that we would know okay, if we're going to split the money between two buildings, we're putting them on the right sites mm -hmm. and we won't get charged the wholesale or we won't have to get paid back the wholesale rate. So maybe let's do it this way what is it that you want to get from this? From, I mean, what do you want to get from this investment of $60,000? Do you want the payback? Do you want the do you want the exposure? Do you want the education? What do you want to get? I, I think I want all of it. <laughs> I want I want the pay I want I want most of it to go to a payback. I think that makes the most sense. Uh, and especially because the carbon footprint. I mean, anything we do to reduce the carbon footprint is. I mean, we're at in the critical stages here with our carbon footprint. I mean, that's just it's not only it, it's a necessity and not just a. Uh, was desired, it, um, but I do think it, there is definitely uh, value in um, doing a station at Lake Park, you, uh, even though it may not reduce the carbon footprint as much as a pan some panels on a roof, uh, because we need to do more. We're not going to be able to reduce the carbon footprint by ourselves. This is a this is a mission, and we got to get enough people on board. And I think the more people that we can educate and and, and show them how useful uh, we can be, the more we get them on board, the more we get them going in the right direction. So I think there, there's real value in that. I think that for the building panels, it should be the biggest, the biggest yeah, amount the, the we can get. And then you can, if, if it's not visible, then there's other ways to advertise and market and celebrate it right, yeah. with the community. That whole 60,000 has to be spent on this or do you, have to keep some money out for maintenance. Um, so we need to because I mean some some grants you have to use all of it up. I mean, right. can you use so the money actually went to Eland Electric. It didn't go it. to the city. Okay. Right. So the city I had to talk to Diana and um, Vanessa about this, our our finance director and our city attorney. It would seem to me that we would not be able to um, Glean some of that sixty thousand because it really went to Eland. Okay, so we have to put it into the project. Right. So okay. you know the way the mechanism that Jesse had described of you know taking that savings and squirreling it away, mm -hmm. right? Something else too. I'm mm -hmm. just going to put in your ears. And there are there we have um, um, an opportunity in the shipyard neighborhood where we are giving grants, matching grants to homeowners to fix up their homes and that includes landlords too by the way so if even if we could take a little bit of this type of money and do that that kind of those kind of projects in a place like the shipyard that would be amazing but i think that we need to find a, a a funding scheme to set aside money from savings in order to, for maintenance okay. i yes. agree i think that's necessary yeah but it won't come from the 60 i don't think okay can we earmark those savings? Can we can we make that recommendation right Absolutely. away? Absolutely. To yes. earmark savings for maintenance. Sure. Maintenance and like future energy roof repairs, you know, mm -hmm. replacement Perfect. panels, um, and other other solar projects as well. Yeah. Repair. Or uh, energy efficiency. Other alternative energy pro right. Uh, energy efficiency or generation, clean energy generation. 
that would be crucial. Okay. And then I guess I would like to make a motion with a recommendation to uh, use 15,000 of this money for um, the EV uh, chargers at White's Park and then I don't know if there should be a separate motion after that or part of it to ask city staff to investigate feasibility for up to uh, 45,000 for rooftop separate, separate, separate those? Separate those? Yeah, okay, so that. just just having the, making the recommendation tonight to move on the 15,000 for White Park. Is there any stuff? There's motion by me, second by Randy. Uh, hold on a second. I would like to okay. discuss. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah, I just needed to yeah. get it down. <laughs> if it turns out that the park department has, has set aside money for replacement, then that 15000 could easily drop down to 5000 mm -hmm. So I would recommend um, addressing that in the motion. So up to? Up to. Okay. okay. Do we have to motion to amend the um, motion or consider it friendly? Up to. All right, up to. All right, any other further discussion? All right, all those in favor of uh, recommending up to 15000 for EV chargers at Lights Park, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. All right, motion Good. passes. And then the second motion I would like to make would be to um, ask city staff to look into um, like feasibility and uh, usage uh, for up to 45,000 for rooftop solar, which would be um, like 25 kilowatts, probably, ish, 25 kilowatts, roughly. And 24 then 24.55. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the rationale would be we could use if it's very feasible to have a very high impact, once we get that, um, we would be able to allocate up to that amount. Uh, if it turns out that uh, we have a couple high impact places but then have the other money left over, we could discuss at a later meeting, um, like the chargers or the um, walkways. There's not a simpler way to say that? Up to 45,000. And then based on that, we can make our decision on what to do with the whole pot. Okay, so I have a motion to direct staff um, to look into the feasibility of using up to $45,000 for rooftop solar power for city buildings. And then I add it to earmark savings for maintenance, repair, and other energy efficiency or clean energy generation. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So all, all that means is that staff is going to come, is going to look at rooftop solar only. That's what it means for now. Again, just. I'm sorry, did someone make. So you made so a motion. So that was a motion. Did someone second it? Yeah, second. second. Well, second. Okay. Then second. Wait, 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 wait. Took a month off and now I'm all slow. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. And Randy? Ned. Ned? Ned. Okay. There, there may be that extra $10,000 to consider as well if the oh. park department already earmarked. Ten thousand for fixing light park. Hmm. So potentially up to fifty-five thousand. Okay. Okay. Oh. Well, should we open the floor? You want to open the floor? Motion to open the floor. I did because I had a question anyway for him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wait. All these wait, 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 wait. Oh, I make a motion to open the floor. So <laughs> I changed to fifty-five, and I still have that as the motion, and okay. so. We are discussing that, and so now, hold on. But see, it wouldn't be part of our motion that the extra ten. We have to take it into consideration, but we don't. It's beyond the grant. No. So he's saying if if, if the fifteen, park. we only have to use five for Light Park because of the ten I left see. over. Right. Right. Why so do we have to include more? a dollar amount right now? Like, why can't we just say we'll? get the, well, the feedback, the, the feedback the back and then we'll talk about it then and then put those put numbers more notion yeah numbers into motions motion. later so yes we gotta find a portion 
portions and portions. Mm -hmm. We can drive a portion. Can we just say we'll make a recommendation later after more information? Would it be more work to do solar feasibility just in general rather than having that amount of specificity? No, I don't think it would be more work. No, no, because it, you know there's some buildings that are an automatic no, mm -hmm. like Bay Beach Pavilion. That's a no. So well, I, and I think I mean we've the original motion is up to 15, so it could obviously be less. If it is less, then obviously we can do something else with that less money. Perhaps we need to. Perhaps so. Just if it's not an excess amount of workload for city staff just yeah. doing solar feasibility I for any and all city buildings that might help us out in the future that too. is not <laughs> going to be good what any and all city buildings or like any that's bad that's bad that's bad okay so we can't do that <laughs> <laughs> too, much. too much that's too much okay yeah so we should limit it or do we have criteria to we don't so yeah, <laughs> he's like, Open the he's floor. like, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Can we go back to Seth's and um, vote on it and then say no? And then can I withdraw the my motion? No, you don't have to. You can <laughs> open up the floor. Oh, we can open up the yeah. floor. Sure, we can open up the floor. Okay. okay. Just, you just got to give me a second to, 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 <laughs> to <laughs> Then we can amend it, however. You just got to give me a second to get there. Okay, who's opening the floor? There's a motion to open the floor by Julia. That's Julia. Julia. Sure. Julia. You got talked into it. Um, <laughs> so there's, and there's Get a second by me. Okay. All right, <laughs> we got a vote. All those Why is that important? All those in favor oh, okay. of opening the floor, say aye. <laughs> aye. All those opposed. Okay. All right, now the floor is open. All right, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> so glad you stuck around. Yeah. Criteria, somebody mentioned criteria. South facing, shade free. Visit we'll email. <laughs> yep, I can email yeah. you the criteria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can take on some of the heavy lifting in terms of looking yes. at the utility history and determining sure. which which buildings would be able to absorb all of the energy from a 25 kW array. Oh, Second point I'll make good. is I would not, if this goes to $45,000 for roof mounted solar, I would not do a single 24 kW system because that would push you outside of net metering. Oh. I would split that up into maybe a 15 and a 15 kW um, pitched. South facing roofs are going to be the most cost effective installation method. Um, flat rubber roofs are doable, um, but they're more expensive per watt. Um, flat metal, very low pitch metal roofs common in city garages are also doable, but not as cost effective. The most cost effective solar installation is a 20 degree south facing pitched shingled or standing seam metal roof. That's where you'll get the most bang for somebody else's buck. <laughs> <coughs> um, but I can email criteria. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. Um, I can kind of whittle down the, based on the usage what might be good cool. buildings. I'll pull up Google Maps of those properties as well just to say okay. this would be not visible. This is a flat roof that has way too much mechanical equipment even though it has high usage. I can try to do some of that heavy lifting. That'd be great. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Do we have any questions while the floor is still open? All right. Uh, motion to close the floor. There's a motion to close the floor. Oh, uh, sorry, I did oh. have a oh, question. Just kidding. The one, my original one. Sorry for your the fifteen thousand for light part. Is that is there a potential that it would be higher than that? Mm -hmm. Depending on know. how <laughs> depending on how <laughs> depending on how far we repaired and replaced modules. Um, <laughs> If all we did was put in the EV inverters, it's probably in the $5,000 range. If we replaced all the modules, the racking, the controllers, the actuators, the mechanics that move it, I still think that's a, a, a good ballpark figure. The Again, high end? Is it at the high end? I don't know that that is the absolute high end. <laughs> um, these were just kind of taking $60,000 and dividing it up into a few different categories. So th there is a chance it could be higher, um, but I can always upon direction from this committee, I can develop firm numbers for you know, whichever mechanisms or methods you guys see fit. So if it's two separate roof mounted solar arrays and fixed lights park, I can come back and email Celestine to share with the group what firm bids would be for those, what firm dollar amounts would be for those. Okay. And again, it's always gonna be subject to some fluctuation because in my bid it's gonna be, I'm gonna assume so many hours of labor right. to do the work, right. obviously if it, Costs more. I don't know what that, or it takes more labor. I don't know how that would be handled. But if it takes less labor, 
that's just we're only going to bill you for the actual labor spent. Um, it's not like a hard bid public project where if we can beat the labor, that's profit in our pocket. That's not the goal of this. So there's that variable factor to the whole thing as well. Right, right. And with Light Park, I think it'd be best to wait till we find out if Parks has got money to do that. That has a big factor with Light Park, yes. Yeah. But the roofs, probably, if you could start working on that. Mm -hmm. So then in our motions, I don't think we should be putting a dollar amount in until we know stuff. Well, I think it's, well, I mean, it's okay to stand I mean, as it is. It's not, it's not like these things are in concrete and we can't change things. I mean, we're not, it's not like we're taking out a shot if we change something. It's, we're advisors. Yeah, the, 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 this gives direction and an idea and, you know, that's all we're doing. If Celestine can get answers from Keith uh, between bef between here and next month's meeting, I can develop some more concrete numbers to say here's what Light Park would actually cost, here's what two roof mounted solar systems would cost, and hey, that leaves you with five thousand dollars for a little solar powered car charger thing for whatever, or an yeah, an e-bike. I can I can present or maybe not come and present, but just email that to Celestine so she can share that with the group and put it on the agenda for next month. And you guys would have a little more concrete information to make more solid recommendations. Wouldn't solar numbers be more lighter than concrete? Uh, oh, that's a reach. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, any more questions while the floor is open? Motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor by Ned. Second. Second, Second by Essie. Good pick you, Randy, but you made that That's fine. Um, all those in favor of closing the floor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. Okay. So our motion on the floor is uh, to direct staff to look into the thank you. Thank you. So thank, you. thank you. To direct staff to look into the feasibility of using up to fifty-five thousand. In fact, this is some discussion um, for rooftop solar power for city buildings and to earmark savings for maintenance, repair, and other energy efficiency or projects or clean energy generation. And now, what Elon's going to be doing? Does that need to be made in the motion, or is that just reported out that they're actually going to be? I mean, we've given them some direction, and they're going to do it. They're going to start looking at. Uh, building usage, we're going to do the research and. That's just referring to staff essentially. I mean. At least not staff, but you know. No, but he has to work with me. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay. That works. Um, so, and just so you all can discuss that some more, and then I'll tell you about what we do now. If the we process. If we want to be less beholden to a dollar amount, it sounds like two 15 kilowatt uh, roof arrays is what you'd be looking into anyway. If we would want to change the motion to that. We could do that. I, I don't know if yeah. it matters. Does it I mean, matter? if you want it, I, fine. I, I don't care. Matters. But I don't think it really matters. Okay. Okay. What do you want to do? Move on. I like Move the kilowatt on. idea. <laughs> If it makes Ned happy, I want to do the kilowatt idea too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, up to two 15 kilowatt so hours. 15 k. 15. What is it? Kilowatt. Is it kilo <laughs> kilowatt? Kilowatt. 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 Kilowatt
the grant has to be used if we get it we'll know in a month okay. that's the fund for uh, the Great Lakes champion but there's another grant that we're applying for the fund for Lake Michigan. She's asking now about the solar. The solar. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, right. Because you said here. by the end of the year. Does yes. this money have to be used so, so it can't carry over? So we have to. We, we cut. Well, here's the thing. The, the, some of this money has been carrying over for various projects in the city that have been assigned. Um, that's a question I have to ask Diana. I think that Diana would like to clean the books up. Right, our finance director. So I'm sure she's like, "Come on, yeah, let's use this really money." Help. And of course, the mayor's like, "What do you mean? We've got sixty thousand dollars. Let's use it." So um, I think if we have a plan for the money, I think that that would be appropriate by the end of the year. I don't think we have to actually have it spent, but I will double check that. And so you're talking about coming back to this committee in mid-November regarding the buildings. Correct. The appropriate buildings. That is correct. And the light. Stuff right. I feel like we get that sooner from Jesse, right? Yeah, he's already doing that. Be able to get we those numbers pretty quickly. But then I have to. Um, I'm trying to be honest here yeah. about my time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and about it's not just what Jesse says; it's what what's all happening here. What 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 other the people who are in charge of those buildings would say. So we probably shouldn't say, hey, yeah, let's put something on transit mm -hmm. if Patty's like, heck no, yeah. right? So I think it would be appropriate to bring back a recommendation that um, is amenable to sure. people who manage the building. Yeah. So that's why November. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, let me just, was that Keith? Keith Wilhelm? Oh, no, I asked that. I got that. Keith had to find out how, if there's money to set aside to repair the light park. I don't think there is, but anyway. Okay. Great. I have got it. So I will bring this back. If it's earlier, great. But if it's not. So we are trying, yep. per the PMP meeting, we are trying to make sure that we are letting staff, the committees know when we can reasonably bring something back. So that's when you can expect it. Alrighty. All right, moving on to our next uh, agenda item here. Um, regular business, uh, item one, a communication from Alderman Galvin about investigating the feasibility of installing solar panels on the various closed landfills in our city. So I do have some information here from Alder Galvin because uh, I did tell him that we were going to be talking about this um, Jesse's presentation and um, oh geez, so sorry. I put it in here so I can find it. Essentially, what Alder Galvin wants is for there to be. Here we go. This is what he says. A young man in the university contacted him about turning our closed landfills into solar farms. So it's not just doing something; it's actually turning them into solar farms. Several acres in the city where the city could generate electricity and sell back to the utility for use in our own buildings or infrastructure. Um, I did not investigate where we own closed landfills. Um, I would imagine that a lot of those are probably very open, wide open spaces um, without much tree, if any tree growth at all. Um, yes. Yeah, and then he wanted the Packer tax money. He just, this is something else. Developing the program to power traffic lights or street lights. Obviously, for $60,000, that isn't feasible because I think, I think Jesse would have said something about that. So, um, yeah, that's, and we have issues already with our LED lights because we have to go and wipe them off. Wipe them off or if the snow, if the really snow goes this way. Mm -hmm. We have to wipe them yeah. off. <laughs> so They're too efficient. <laughs> yes. So um, yeah. that is what he wanted. So that's for your conversation. He wants about solar farms to generate electricity to sell back. So does he? Can he give us this contact so we could have this contact come and present to us? Sure. I mean, I don't know anything about. 
the only journey landfills into the only landfills I'm aware of were the former county landfills I'm not aware of uh, city, city landfills land, yeah, I unless it's the one over by the woods golf that's course. The, he mentioned that one mm -hmm. and then we have to explore whether there's methane piping running underneath these things uh, I'm assuming there is we'd have to know and that's, that. and that's danger that's an old land from yeah. Oh. Yeah, I mean, they they had yeah. a methane flare over there for the longest time, but I don't know how that, that's all set up. But but it is nowadays to have, you know, methane piping set up to turn a solar farm in there. What's underneath my landfill? And am I puncturing the liner? And all of those questions have to be addressed. Right. Yeah. So. I would like to raise an idea at this point. Based on a, a very long um, conversation we just had, and based on this request, um, and, and a lot of other things that have been going on, I think it's time for us to seriously consider having um, a clean energy working group for our commission to hash out some of these details and bring them to the commission. So, um, you know, we get, a, we get a line like this to investigate installing solar panels. Well, great. Those landfills, we don't really have the details here at the commission meeting. But I think if we had a group that was committed to doing some of that research, members of this commission, members of the public that aren't on this commission, that we could actually come together with a lot more information at commission meeting time and be able to make more efficient decisions so um, yeah. and you would want to meet regularly to actually get things stop moving I'd be very in favor of that as well I think that you know the number of things that have already come up uh, will require a lot of work but there are a number of other like grant or funding opportunities uh, and partnerships with other like local governmental bodies uh, that will require a lot of work so I think that I think the time would be pretty good for that too I was um, I basically came to the same conclusion about like water resource stuff uh, and then so and I'm not trying to change the subject because I think what you're talking about is actually needed to get work done because <laughs> uh, otherwise it can't get work done and be with just one person trying to do stuff in, in the meantime but um, between these meetings uh, I then I also think it goes back to that we don't have a sustainability plan at all for the city and like because that normally would drive like you know what our priorities where where our priorities for like reducing energy and specifically that meet the city's goals and needs like we don't there's no goal there's no need you know you don't have an assessment of the energy in general so stuff like this comes up 60 grand it's like well a plan would help you identify immediately where that could go strategically rather than kind of having a conversation about picking one thing here or there too mm -hmm. so. can you elaborate on that so so um, a sustainability plan say in the comprehensive of the city of Green Bay mm -hmm. plan would have helped here tonight how because it would definitely have like a uh, energy section to it and then that would have looked at specifically like building maybe building usage it depends what the goal is if it was like what did was the goal established like zero net something with with the working plan that we adopted was uh, to get to zero, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. net so. neutrality by um. But you'd have to like you'd look, and oh, I don't right. know okay. anything about early energy, so like you'd look at building usage for the city properties and some of the stuff, and then actually make a plan of like, or do we want, you know, I don't know, I don't have a good example. I can probably give you a better no, example under the water yeah. <laughs> realm of yeah. things how yeah. things would work, but yeah, sure. um, yeah. but yeah. I and on uh, the Milwaukee, I mean Milwaukee has a really good sustainability plan. You know, and it gives the broad brush over and strategies of focus areas. So are we focused, like resident, maybe you find out your energy in the city is tons of it, most of it's residential, so maybe there's a residential energy program that's, that's developed specific to that, that meets those goals. Uh, for like, 
water, like storm water, you know, City of Milwaukee just found out that school yards, schools have the most impervious pavement out of mm -hmm. owner, and that's the largest city owning per impervious pavement, right? Wow. And so they are focusing mm -hmm. all a huge program on greening school yards because that's like the biggest thing, like they can f see that as the biggest picture of impact for like stormwater management. Okay. So a sustainability plan would go through the different sectors of what is of interest and energy being a huge one too. So that's where, that's where I was, I was gonna bring it up in the updates too, but it, it, I basically came to the same conclusion, like you can't, we can't, it's really hard to get piecemeal things done before. You know, and if you had a like a residential program or plan, then it would come. You know, first you start with the sustainability plan. Like, where well, maybe we should be taking this up a little later, though. We're off. I don't know that it is. I think, I think we could make a motion. In fact, I will. I'm going to make a motion. Um, I'd like to make a motion to create a working group to investigate clean energy and support our clean energy working plan. How does that relate to the motion? To the, to to the, the item. agenda item. Yeah. The agenda item to investigate the feasibility of installing solar panels on the various closed landfills in our city. I think that could be folded into what the working group does, you know, and takes us this up right away. Sure. Have that assigned to that working group. And I think there's a number of other things that that group uh, could take on as well. See, but, but I come back to there's like a so many amazing ideas. Jesse just gave right. us a <laughs> like, flip of them, right? Okay. So you could just go down for a year down the solar thing for at the the at the um, at these landfill sites, and then maybe it's not the you don't know if it's the best place to put your energy and planning and grant writing into maybe making that happen before you do other work. You know, or yeah. you make the decision that <coughs> I think that's the benefit of having the motion come out of this uh, communication to be creating a clean energy working group so it doesn't limit us to just working on closed landfills. Then we're able to take on um, other projects as well that can have a little bit more holistic and big picture things like you're alluding to. So should that come, you're saying it should come from this agenda item or not? See, I'm thinking I, that. I'm, I'm thinking that. This, the, the, it doesn't address the, I mean, it. it it's a bigger item and really has a different purpose than the agenda item. This agenda item is very specific. So and we should be, Elder Gallon is going to be looking for something very specific back. I mean, like, do we want to hear from this contact and get more information specifically on this in the meantime, while we then form a group that would also look at this and the bigger general? But I think to address this agenda item, we need to say, yeah. uh, Either we want to receive in place on file because we want to form this group that will look into this and other things, but I think even that mm -hmm. is... I would table it yeah. until after the group is formed and then assign it to the group. That would be... But th these, are two, these are two separate motions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just like one example of so many things people are going to bring. Ideas. Mm -hmm. So how do you deal with them? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm wondering as far as these groups, uh, if we want to somehow uh, get the universities involved, get groups, I mean, if we get, I mean, if, I'm used to having staff do a lot of footwork. I'm not, and then I, they bring it and I, I work from that. I'm not used to actually doing a lot of the footwork myself. Um, and I, because a lot of times I just don't have the expertise, you know. Uh, so I'm wondering if we should approach the university to see if we can get some groups formed, go to some professor and say, could you make this part of your program where you can have students work on this for credit? That's definitely and not how that works. <laughs> no, it's not how it works. Anything like, there's nothing like that. The working group is the, well, maybe the professor themselves. Might or, well, something, group. I don't know. Yeah. You, you, yeah, I mean, I do work with students, so there are opportunities to bring students in to certain projects. Um, but it has to often be an interest of a particular faculty member. Right. We have to find something they, that would match. They work on research that interests them, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they often have very complete research agendas. So just to drop that on, it's, you can sometimes make it a 
potentially a class project. But again, it, it, it's initiated by that faculty member. And that doesn't mean we can't talk to faculty members. Um, it's something that I mean, I certainly would try to bring students, my, my students that I work with, mm -hmm. into. I mean, so I'd be it because I'd be personally interested in it. Yeah. Right. I think that's what Ned's trying to say, though, is yeah. a working group would actually be like the most invested people in reducing energy exp and experts mm -hmm. within this community that you could bring mm -hmm. in and work on it in a more focused way. And I'm completely in support of that. So. Second my motion. Oh, I second your motion. Well, I don't, I still it, don't think are we making that motion now or are we going to need to make it later? I you think can make the motion now. Okay, but, uh, but you we, still we have, have got two motions we need to make. That's one. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it needs to be with this item since yes. it's an agenda item. Yes. I do agree yeah. with you guys, but I think we still need to address that. Yeah, that's the actual agenda. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We can do a motion yes. to table it. But we can pick it up once we do. All right, so we've got a motion by Ned to create a clean energy working group uh, to deal with this and other issues, seconded by Julia. Uh, this is what I'm I have. Gonna be on the I have lot. to create a clean energy. Hold that thought. Create a clean energy working group to investigate and prioritize energy projects for the city. Yeah. Yes. Residents and businesses, because these are all not synonymous. Can we add energy efficiency? So I mean, you yeah. you said something. Investigate. It's, become, it's not just clean energy. Yeah. Well, basically, this would be a vehicle of the pre the already approved clean energy working plan that we're doing. I don't think that needs to be. Yeah. Well, but it, is it but is that enough clean energy working group? Do you want something else? Do you, well, are they, they going to make a energy plan, or what are you? We have, we have um, so we've adopted that draft plan. Right, right. right. Yeah, yeah, we got that. Yeah. So I think that group would be charged with supporting that plan. Okay. Right? Yeah. Yep. All right. There's a lot more. And so does this like so? Yeah. Well, we can get through this, and then I'll ask my next <laughs> question <laughs> that's okay. related to right. that special right. agenda item. Yeah. Okay, I've got that. And this is exactly what that work. This is one of those things that that group could take the time outside of yes. this meeting to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're building a space for it. And who's who's? So I have a first, and Julia. And a second, Julia. All right. All right. Are you ready to vote? All those in favor? Say aye. aye. All those opposed? All right. Motion passes. Okay. I'll make a motion to table uh, Alder Gavin's uh, communication to investigate the feasibility of installing solar panels on the various closed landfills in our city uh, until we have uh, this group formed and they can take up this item and report back to the commission on it. Maybe discussion. I don't Question. believe we're allowed to discuss a table. Well, well we can discuss it before we vote on it. Yeah, so Steen Roberts rules. I don't believe we can. Uh, table. I mean, when you table a motion, tabled, I don't know. You, you made a motion at the table, can't you? <laughs> I made a motion at the table. <laughs> I haven't been seconded. seconded. It hasn't been motioned. It has. You can table something. You do have to second it. Where's my thing? Let's see. Roberts rules. I don't believe we're allowed to discuss the motion at the table. <laughs> I'm so really. I am so just really tired. tired. It was it was pulled a couple of times. Sure. Really. Okay. Cheat cheat. Then we should discuss it before we make the motion. Okay, so. We just started talking. If you. <laughs> well, I, I, didn't, I, didn't know, I didn't know there was more to it. I just had a Gotta read those quick questions. question. <laughs> now maybe, that you're working. Maybe I'm holding around. Am I allowed to go? I have no idea. Well. Well, I'll just withdraw the motion for now. All right, motion withdrawn. Are there any questions? So you have this plan now, and how do you? How are you deciding whether projects that come with ideas fit into what the your the plan, or like will meet help meet the plan? That that like uh, how how are you going to make how did you, how did you make the decision that this solar farm idea meets like what you want potentially to do enough that you would actually take time to work on it in the working group? and or for the plan. So you're saying does this rise to the level of something the working group would investigate and why? And yeah. Okay. Well I think if I someone brings something um, if think. someone brings something, we would look at it and then make a decision if it's worth it or not. I think we would need to have enough information, information compiled in order to say no. Um, for this way. <laughs> so let me just interject if you table it's not debatable if you postpone consideration it is. Oh. Oh. All right. Imagine Imagine the <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> so this group, along with doing research, could have experts come and speak too. I mean, that it would have to. I mean, we have experts come and speak to this group, but we could have preliminary experts come to that group before whoever's on the group reports back. Yeah. So it wouldn't just be their own research. Correct. So we could have, if we have a, a non-quorum of sustainability commission members of the working group, then we could have non-commission members <coughs> also be a part of it, and then we wouldn't have to deal with like the open meetings as long as whatever we decided there was brought back for presentation and approval by this body. Mm -hmm. So we could have up to four people. <coughs> three. From this, From this body? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say comfortably four. Four. Mm -hmm. okay. Three and a half. Yeah. And it would be it would be a looser structure. There wouldn't be any annoying people making Robert's Rules of Order annoying. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I like Robert's Rules. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but you certainly can work and get other people in the community to work with you, just like the Pollinator Corridor Working Group. Mm -hmm. There should be a document, like the Pollinator Corridor Working Group has a document. There should be a document that creates this working group. Um, and, you know, the conversation at the next committee meeting, once this document is presented and the committee can adopt it, conversation about the expectations of reporting. Well, as long as we talk about it, I think that's fine. You. I think they're acknowledging, though, that plain you need city staff to be on the working group. Yeah. No. No. Why not? We I don't bring, understand. They certainly How you could can have be. a conversation about some of these topics without them being involved from the beginning. You could certainly involve them, but it, you can't really direct a staff member to be on a group. I understand that, but I don't understand how they're not necessary part of the conversation with things. Like, if we want to work on stormwater, you have to talk to public works right. no matter what. Right. Mm -hmm. So consistently, if they wouldn't like, come to the group, like, the group would have to go like, to them. Yeah, but it, if a, but the whole like to have a working effort that actually builds momentum and gets stuff done, it has to be regular. So they have to be. I mean, I right. just don't understand how they can't have a invest like they well, can't be invested here's the in the issue process. Though. So this, yeah. this a working group is not authoritative. It's not imbued with authority, and this commission is advisory. And so anything would have to go to, so I get what you're saying, Julia, that mm -hmm. it would need to, you need to have the investment of, you know, that department person. But eventually it's going to have to get approved by a different committee than this one. Yeah, but it's their change. expertise that yeah. you need, not their, not their approval. approval. I mean, the working group could set up meetings with department staff in between commission meetings. I mean, Jesse and I met with park staff, and that was even sure. not with I just, that. I'm just seeing it as a big broader, like, if it's in sustainability is, and you're do, trying to do it for the city integral, it's got to have to be throughout the, and you can't do it without the departments themselves being, I mean, as is transportation, that's, I mean, key, right? No, I don't think. So. I agree. They can't. We can't do it without them being involved. But we can, at the same time, we can't tell them to be there, right? We can't tell us. I agree. I'm, just, I'm not saying we can tell them. I'm just saying it's something to think over. about when yeah. you're trying to work Forward. on something mm -hmm. continuously, and they're they're <coughs> a big piece of the expertise because it all impacts them, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was talking about. So how do you know? I'm used to having the experts because yeah. I wouldn't. You wouldn't want me on that group. <laughs> <laughs> I think a benefit of it too is that we can involve folks that are city staff <coughs> or commission members. We can, you know, folks like Jesse or folks at like the NWC Energy Center, Absolutely. all the, the professors and, and students and whatnot. So. Right. Well, uh, yeah, there would be other experts out there that would you think have the same expertise as uh, staff if it's the same subject as one in. in in education. I don't know. Every question goes back to Celestine having to go to city staff yeah. to find out the answer. I the <laughs> just like it's a bottleneck. Like um, we'll, so. we'll still be bringing work back here to discuss. We'll just have less deliberation at the table here. 
we'll have our ducks in a row more so before our meetings, and we'll allow for more work to happen in between them. That's my sense. But yeah, you're right. We need to try and balance that as much as possible. Mm -hmm. We you just can't direct. You have to questions do it. that come up, and then mm -hmm. you're going to be emailing them or trying yeah. to call them and find yeah. out your answers. But I think we could. So. You know, I think the group should reach out to sit down, figure out who they like, who they feel they need to be on this group to, you know. I get the work I done, think, I think it's, yeah, I know and then it. reach out to any I staff just, uh, member at any department and ask if there's anyone that would like to to be on. And I think that's appropriate. And if they say no, well, then you just go to them when you need to as often as you can. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, we can't direct them. No, I wasn't suggesting. Right. I was just talking about it as a. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. a good idea. Just the thing. <laughs> so, uh, when we table something, it should have a date on it, correct? If I remember you right. Can, you should. You can actually table indefinitely, or you can table to a date certain. Both. Right. So I'm wondering. I, I never heard of proposed. I never heard of the postponed uh, uh, option. That's a new one on me. Uh, uh, maybe we should just postpone it until. I don't have this in my head. That's why we have cheat sheets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> postpone it until. Uh, uh, Work group can report back on it. Second. All right, there's a motion to postpone until the work group can report back on the landfill proposal. A uh, motion by Randy, second by Ned. Discussion? All those. Just hold that thought there, Mr. Hoffmeister. Think about how you're going to vote. Is this time valuable? <laughs> And it was, uh, okay, it was made by whom? Randy, mm -hmm. and seconded by Ned. Okay. All right, everybody know how we're gonna vote? All right, all those I need in favor? Minute. <laughs> all those in favor, say aye. 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 And all those opposed, say nay. All right, motion carries. Okay. Um, Deb Hutchison. All right, yeah. Do you do you want to table this for the next meeting or no? I don't think this will take two. No, okay. you can. Like I said, you can just give it to me and I can put it in the minutes. Okay. So this is what we talked about. Should I start? Yeah. Okay. 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 So this is what we talked about a while ago um, about getting the city people who live here, businesses, um, more in the know of just sustainability and some ideas about sustainability from us and um, I just have a printout here that has to do with transportation home consumer building projects it uh, I talked to Celestine about it once and we narrowed it down a little made it a little more doable um, and this would go out to the neighborhoods and the neighborhood committees would send it out to people in their neighborhood and the idea is to invite people to get more involved in their families, and their yards, and their projects, and their food. Well, maybe I don't know. But, um, you know, to think about sustainable practices from, from us, kind of an invitation of sorts to step in and get the families involved, get the businesses involved. There's no commitment or anything. But you know, we could ask for something. People, I, I don't know. I don't want to make it too complicated. But I wanted your feedback and um, any ideas that any of you have that you'd like to add to it or take away from it that might um, make it better. So you could put that on the minutes you said. So there's a couple things we could do since what you're doing. The it says you, we can act on it, right? Okay. Um, and essentially, I can be better if actually everybody looked at it right now. But I'd have to go copy it. Yeah. And there's no way for me to put it up there. Can you send that to me super quick? Do you have that in your? Mm -hmm. oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do it that way.
Do I want to send it as a doc or just private doc? I think you probably want to send it to me as a document to my email, Celestine okay. J.E. So what do, can you just talk about what the idea is to do a topic per newsletter or something? Um, or let's see, it says, you? this is a checklist of things that Green Bay neighbors can use to help with their own individual sustainability goals. Households, businesses could choose one or two goals a year or use it however you wish. This would be a great family project, New Year's resolution, or just a way to contribute to your community. Um, and yeah, I had some questions like, should we put in some statistics about mm -hmm. the definition of sustainability? Is that will that turn? Yes, because what's going to happen is the neighbor associations will choose. So if you all approve this document, the neighbor associations will I say give them give Will Peters, who is the mm -hmm. neighbor association coordinator, and um, he will send it to the neighbor associations and they'll choose what they want to put in the newsletters. So I'm sorry, is it just like informational or are you expecting Ideas. the neighborhood to do something, like to look at pick something or? So it could, be track? so neighborhood so associations could this? actually pick a neighborhood wide or neighbor, like something in the neighborhood park. Um, there's many grants available through the Green Bay Neighborhood Leadership Council. Mm -hmm. So the neighborhood association could choose to do that. Um, but then individuals could choose to do individual projects as well. Deb, can you send that to me? Did you send that? Yeah. I, I thought I did. Let's see. Let me try it again. I'm sorry. Many grants for the neighborhood association. So, like for instance, uh, I'm trying to think of a mini grant project. Plus, oh, like banners on those poles. That's a that's a mini grant project. And so, a lot of times, neighbor associations will raise money through you know ice cream social, whatever, and then the GB and LC also raises money and they give mini grants to neighbor associations. So the neighbor association could actually choose to make a sustainability project a mini grant project. Right, the GB. Oh, Green Bay Neighborhood Leadership Council. Is there any way we could work with them to do like a specific mini grant around sustainability? Yes. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's something for, I mean, I think that the purpose of this is to get something in the newsletters, right? Okay, that's what I, right, right. Um, but certainly can work with Will to see if there's, they're, they're in the midst of raising money right now. Um, so I think they're going to be focused for the next few months on raising that money so that they can make many grants in the first place. Um, but um, yeah, yes, I think that you could actually have, um, you could ask, you could find, we could find money. Actually, be good use of that extra money, but you know, left over from some rooftop solar panels, <laughs> right? For a neighborhood, a competitive neighborhood grant project, right? I don't think it's working. Oh, phooey. It's all right. Well, so because everybody can't up. see it, um, in the future, if anybody's got any documents, they just can get those in before Thursday so they can come yeah, up and I pack it. Tell them. Oh, just try yeah. That would yes. help. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. So, would you mind looking at it when you have a chance and just giving some feedback? And mm -hmm. and I wasn't thinking about it as a neighborhood association thing, but I'd be willing to present it to the, the next neighborhood. You don't. You, know? you don't have to go. I mean, oh, okay. I think this is for their newsletters. Oh, okay. Seth has already been to the GBNLC. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I think 
this is for the, the this is something specifically for the oh, neighborhood association okay. newsletter it just fit right, in. right? Okay. so i would just say um look at the document i will send it to you i will bcc you so that you only communicate with me mm -hmm. and then if you have any changes i'll make those changes um feels like we have to bring it back though yeah. well okay. if yeah. Oh uh, yeah, because we should all approve the changes yeah. as it. <coughs> yes. Okay. So let's work it that way. Mm -hmm. So, let me just get back to my little thing here. Um, so. No. You will send it to me. I will send it out to everyone. You will give me your changes, and then we'll discuss it the next meeting. Next meeting. Yeah. Are they just looking for like content, or would they want like like a, like design as well? Because we had somebody. If you wanted to, I could connect you with somebody who offered to do like graphic design stuff too if it's like going in the oh. newsletter. Well, I or think, let me ask yeah. Bill, because I think okay. some of the neighbor some neighborhood associations are very basic, some are really fancy. Right, yeah. it, it'd be in each neighborhood association's letter and they have their own format and everything, mm -hmm. so I don't know that we... Okay. I don't know that we've wanted to invest that time. That's fair. Okay, so what is your pleasure? So a motion to... Uh, hold over? Hold until our next meeting. Motion by Randy. Second, Second by Deb. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. All right. Motion carries. Thanks, Deb. Welcome. Thank you for doing this. All right. On to item B: informational updates from commission members. We had our uh, pollinator corridor working group meeting last. Wednesday. Um, it was nice. We had a, actually a park uh, employee who came to it and kind of looked at, I'll just real quick, these are the areas that we looked at. Um, starting to look for grants for more pollinating plant um, plantings, um, how to create maps, um, what kind of outreach and partnerships we should be doing, um, any events that we should be promoting, uh, maintenance, what kind of maintenance do these gardens and plantings entail, and who is going to be responsible for any that we put in. Um, and then just kind of uh, size requirements, other kinds of observations really. Um, it, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was nice. Um, Happened during the tornado. Who do you have from UW Green Bay? Um, from UWGB, we've got uh, Holly Keener and uh, Bobby Webster. Mm -hmm. So biodiversity um, conference center people, I think. Yep. And, uh, yeah, but so I work closely with Bobby, but the biodiversity center also through. They're, they've just they they have done a ton of like habitat assessment work too. So I don't know if I mean if Bobby's on there, she's probably making that connection. Hopefully with the right data, like she they should have layers, GIS layers for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she you know created I mean? a nice GIS map of of my I had an old map of mm -hmm. all like not all but a bunch of gardens and land like uh, land areas that, that are pollination. On the other th and she did, she works with the GIS stuff. Um, the, uh, the other thing was um, I had uh, talked to the Lute Lieutenant Governor and uh, DOT regarding kind of larger scale uh, plantings and, and what does Wisconsin currently do, what do other states do as far as how do we use our, our roadways for pollinator habitat and um, the the DOT is looking into doing more of that um, and balancing it with sight line safety and um, invasive species control. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, uh, but, you know, I, I did ask, uh, respond to that as far as could we do any research as far as what other states are doing and, and how that's working. Like in Ohio, I believe, in Iowa, um, I think they have more established programs for creating pollinator habitat along the roadways. But it is on the DOT's radar, um, and they do some active management for pollinating species right now. That's 
one thing, quicker part. One thing a lot of uh, the Door County communities have been passing is noxious uh, weed ordinances. Mm -hmm. So people have to manage those on proper entities and to manage them. I don't know. I don't what know. constitute a noxious weed? Japanese knotweed. Yeah, Russian knotweed. Oh, so so, so we it's passed one of the Billy, uh, Billy, Billy, Billy Buckthorn. Sure. We passed that uh, during my time on council. We looked at the noxious weed ordinance and, and added some items to that, and also um, looked at, you know, acceptable use. I mean, giving the official okay to do like prairie restoration on your on your property and, and things like that. We do have rules about that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, um, I don't know that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Uh, that was 2011, I believe. Um, but we do have an ordinance, and maybe it's been updated since then. I don't know, but. So that's good. So then, I'm looking. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about enforcement. I mean, there's yeah, still buckthorn everywhere. And well, yeah. Door, I'm, yeah, the Door County communities are taking it pretty seriously. Yeah. <laughs> I have to tell you, let's see. But they've had some, you know, champions that really. So. Noxious weeds and maintenance of vegetation. Is it just outgrown stuff, or is it, it's the invasive species? That's the uh, you know, problem. We put some invasives on that list. Uh, yeah, and and your your site does need to be actively managed, so you can't just let things go to whatever weed seed might be sitting in your yard and just say I'm just restoring prairie. No, it actually has to we meet just requirements. <sighs> Door County ones are specifically for invasives to deal have mm -hmm. make to help property. You know, not the not the untidy lawn. Like I right. just let my grass grow and it's a prairie. Yeah, so there's kind of... <laughs> That's a different there's issue. A, yeah, there, right, and there's a few different components to that. But it is! <laughs> part of the ordinance is the unsightliness. Part of it is the invasive species. And, and part of it is, like, what are the acceptable uses for, for your land? When do you think you'll have maps? Uh... We, uh... So, Cece Kiefer, she used to own a um, stone silo in Ledview, she is, she is going to kind of survey some of our outlying area, like the plots on the old map, to see if those are still e existing. Um, and then the park employee uh, who came um, would like to take some of his own time, you know, not during work hours, to look around at some of the park plantings that we've done to see if those are still existing. Um, so I'd say hopefully within the next month we'll get a good idea of what was on the old map? Is it still there? What do we need to take off? Um, and then are there new ones that we just happen to notice or people are telling us that we can put on? So what we did was we adopted the state statute of noxious weed. Mm. Um, and so it includes some things uh, and anything designated, designated by the DNR as mm -hmm. noxious. Mm -hmm. um, and it shall also include, um, I'll give the common names, burdock, thistle, ragweed, garlic mustard, buckthorn, and poison ivy. So, that's pretty broad, I think. Is the, or, or is there some way to have, I don't have no idea what you are mapping, but um, I'm just thinking of work, we're working with uh, people in the Wilkwiak water, or should, but there might be just people interested, mm -hmm. right, in doing stuff on their own properties. So mm -hmm. is that like reflected in the map? Like, how do people yeah. help? How do you say, oh, my property's right here. I could help. Sure. Or uh, something like that. How, you know? how, because how I, this is like a very trendy need? thing people love, yeah. right. you know. Hey, how like big how a space does it have to be? Okay. How big a garden? We did be, talk about that. I'd be glad to get into the weeds on all these. Sure. No, no, no I sure. just... Well, not <laughs> weeds. <laughs> weeds. <laughs> yeah, into the butterfly weeds. And I didn't mean to get the weeds on an update. Size right. requirement. I mean, I think we but said, you know, like a 5 by 5 a 5 by 10 would be fine. as a stop over habitat. Oh really? Yeah. And that's small. Yeah, small. please. Yes. Yep. No Little problem. girl's birthday party. Oh, thanks, Deb. Thanks, Deb. Just good seeing you all. Yeah, you yeah. Well, thanks for the letter. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're welcome. And that's we we were looking all over as far as what's put on that. Well, Brown County, um, even close by counties. You know, it's, it's Green Bay, like as as a bay, not necessarily just as a city. But, um, I'll stop asking questions so we can talk about it. Yeah, I love talking about this stuff. You guys. <laughs> we'll close this out another time. <laughs> Aardvark is open. <laughs> Good call. Okay. Anything else? Otherwise, that's just an informational item. 
I was curious about uh, the status of the coal tar sealant resolution. I know that there was some yes. staffing issues and legal, or just look at what the updated timeline is. Yeah, I almost forgot. No, unfortunately, I didn't forget. Um, so it, it did go to council, and um, I not good looking back there. Um, but it, it did go to council, oh. and the resolution was passed to council. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, sweet. You made it sound like it was going to be bad news. <laughs> well, I don't know what. I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure what import that has, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that DPW is already using is already using alternatives to coal tar sealants. So I don't know about measurement and enforcement. Mm -hmm. But they did include passed. private like the full scope of what we had recommended, banning for private so. entities. Yeah. It's so. mm -hmm. cool. Whatever was. I believe it was put, isn't legal also looking into that? Didn't someone I quoted legal staff? That was the initial uh, no. referral. That's, no. not my rec that's not my recollection, but. Well, from like the. I'm tired, so I could be not re <laughs> recollecting it properly. Um, Let's see. Because if it already. passed, then for the private, I mean, it's something to actually like have an article about and start publicizing. Yeah. I can tell Queen I Wisconsin. Know. They'll blast that on their social media. Discussion with possible action. Refer to, oh, here we go. Refer to law department. Okay, see rice coal. I see rice coal. Okay, so let's see. This one, 521. Refer to law department draft an ordinance which would create not red ban mm -hmm. and that was from the council so the ordinance hasn't been drafted yet no oh okay That's no I knew I'm, I'm like council passed that resolution I'm yeah. thinking myself am I crazy no, no um, so yes utilizing model refer to law department to draft an ordinance but that hasn't come back yet and that's going to take a while mm -hmm. law departments very My other question is mm -hmm. green, green tier. Did that ever make it onto the committee? Uh, INS? Yeah. No, it did not. So, we'll have a conversation later. Okay. Now I'm lost. Okay, back to agendas. Um, yeah. You and I will talk later. Okay. Any other updates? There's a, a UW Madison graduate student named Kayla. I forgot her last name. But she started uh, mapping and doing some like uh, mapping and assessment work for green infrastructure mm -hmm. for the city, and um, and building layers and using this Arc GIS Arc Planner tool, whatnot. And she's going to be using it. I think she wants to do it as a. She's an urban and regional planner, and she would like to be using doing it as a professional. So we. I would like to get her to at least talk to us, I guess, so we know what she's doing and like we like give her input because mm -hmm. otherwise the students will just build what they think you want rather than <laughs> what you want. <laughs> so, um, but it's a really great opportunity for someone to have do some assessment and analysis work for us and potentially plan doing some planning work. So cool. that's what I have. I, don't, I think she's in Madison, so and school year's about to start. So, um, I was I don't know at a future meeting having her zoom in maybe. Sure. Or that would be a working group thing. Maybe. Like you know, you're rushing I, I, a lot. I know. I'm. You're right. Yes. Yep. If I had a working group. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do I have to do a motion to make one, or do I no. have to just or no. No. It's already been made, right? No, for, no, for, for, for the water. Um, I mean, I already, water I already think we agreed to lead the water. I agree to help lead the weed. There are a couple people in here. Really I mean, you can certainly talk, you know, there, there isn't, uh, no, there's not a water working group yet. But, like, uh, you know, you can definitely talk to her whenever you want. And it's, there they groups all the way. <laughs> Yeah. 
other updates? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to the update on the Great Lakes Champions mini grant application. So it's in? Yeah. Cool. Hopefully we'll get it. I thought it was brilliantly written. <laughs> um, so the next step, as I said, is to, maybe I didn't say this, is to apply for the Fund for Lake Michigan. So Mayor and I are meeting with Vicki Elkin and her compatriot next week um, to discuss that and discuss, you know, uh, pre-application, which is June, November 1st. Um, and then what we could potentially do with that money. Uh, Vicki, who was um, very energetic and knowledgeable, um, floated the idea of using those funds to potentially hire a sustainability coordinator, which would be great. Cool. Um, but we will, you know, I'm not promising anything or suggesting anything, but rather reporting. Um, we also are going through the Fund for Lake Michigan. Uh, we're going to go, some of us are going to go to Austin, Texas for the Out One Water Conference in mid-September. So that should be good. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I've got. All right. Because I'm literally losing steam. I keep saying that. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. I think it's, I, it, it was actually not hard to put together. Um, we got letters of, I put uh, the entire application is in your packet. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the letter on the most, the two letters I'm very excited about, um, uh, and I know Seth very nicely gave a letter, but we only had 10 pages. Oh, right? Okay. That's why, right? I know. Oh, I didn't even try. <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Um, but I was very excited about the letter from Garrett Bader, who is a developer, and the letter from Oneida. Oh, cool. And they are very interested in doing something like this with us. Sweet. So, should we be lucky enough to get this grant to code on it? This is really exciting. She's not giving enough energy to it. This, come on, it's the first what grant it is the first. application. Oh, that's awesome. yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Julia. Carry the, she did carry the water <laughs> for me. <laughs> I, this is an exciting opportunity for a really small amount of money. But <laughs> the wor amount of work that went into this application <laughs> was not justified. But anyway, but there's it's it's really a great step in the right direction. And it's opening the doors up to more conversations with more funders. So I think that's what's really also exciting. And, Great, app, great grant application. Great grant application. Thank you, guys. Thank for you. Us. Working on that. Yeah. It was fun, Exciting. actually. I was I was super pumped. <laughs> I mean, at the time, not now. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, but at the time, I was super pumped. Um, oh, what am I doing? Why is this going to? Okay. Anyway, right. done. Cool. Done. Um, I'm not sure what item F is. Yeah, public you know, ignore that. Okay. I don't know why that's on there either. I'm looking at this, I'm like, this is very badly done, agenda Celestine. So yes, no, that's not. All right, cool. Well, then we'll move on to adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? Aye. Aye. Motion by Effie. Second. Yeah. Second by Randy. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. All right. Adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Aren't Don't you glad you so joined us? Oh, we got a fun on the name. John, just ignore him. <laughs> 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 the meeting's over. You don't have to listen. You can leave. Remember to leave the meeting, Randy. <laughs> <laughs>